Hey guys, and welcome to a new video. Today we're gonna to be checking out custom LUTs. Now, most of the tutorials on LUTs revolve around Photoshop. However, some of them really miss on the key detail in creating a LUT. And that's exactly what I'm going to show you. I've already created two LUTs, and the cool thing about this tutorial is I'm gonna show you guys how you can just click and drag these onto your videos so you can increase your editing workflow. First things first, grab a video that you want to create a LUT for, pull it into Premiere Pro. Now all you have to do is up here in the program window, click on this export frame button. If you don't see that, click on the plus sign and drag the little camera icon down to the area down here and click OK. Click on the export frame button. You can also click control shift E and that will export a frame. Browse to a certain location. I'm gonna name it YouTube LUT tutorial and we're gonna name this screen grab. You can name it whatever you want. Click OK, that file will be exported. Now all we have to do is click and drag our screenshot into Photoshop and then we can start manipulating it. So all the other tutorials kind of go like this. You leave your background as is, don't unlock it, go to the adjustments and you can start clicking through any of these, adjusting the brightness, the contrast, going through here and manipulating the curves and do all this stuff like cool. You guys can create that stuff and then all you have to do is export that as a LUT. But the thing that they don't really go over and most of them is this little tool called the gradient map. When I create a LUT, nine times out of 10, I'm using something within a gradient map. So when you open up the gradient map, you'll see it kind of looks like this. You can click through all these select presets and it gives you some interesting colors. This got me to thinking about LUTs. So when you open up a gradient map, it'll look like this. The top left square has a location of zero and the top right square has a location of 100%. This means that the left portion of the gradient map represents all of the dark colors while the right portion represents all of the lighter colors. Now the bottom portion of our gradient map will control the colors based on those certain parameters. Notice how I dragged the black color to the right more and it's filling up more of the midtone since right in here it'll probably be around 40%. If I drag the white to the left, you'll see that our highlights will start to get blown out. So now that we understand what is left and right and how the colors work, if you click OK, we also have another option that you can play around with, which is reverse. If you click on reverse, all it does is flip the color panel and you can see it right here. Ready? That's something to keep in mind. Now, let's start adding colors to this. So if you click on that black square right there to the left, you can see that there's a color thing right here. We can click on that color thing and it'll bring up the color picker. For example, if I drag to red, you'll notice that all of our shadows are red. And let's click on our highlights. You can also double click on those squares, change it to some turquoise color. Now, this is a super obnoxious color and this is not going to be a LUT, but here's where the magic happens. You're going to be playing down in the layers panel, click on the gradient map, change the blend mode up here to any of these layers. You can play around with all of them from darken all the way to lighten to overlay to difference. I found that difference and exclusion are some of my favorite ones to play around with. Now, this is overpowering. So what we want to play around with as well is the opacity. If I drag my opacity to the left all the way to zero, you'll see there is no effect on the actual image. But if I drag it to the right a tiny bit, say around 14, maybe even 25%, we have an interesting color going on. Check this out. And the cool thing is you can hit this eyeball right here and that'll pretty much untoggle your gradient map so I can see what the before and after look was. So now that I like the color of this, I'm gonna show you guys how to export it as a LUT. It should also be known that you guys can also add any of the other adjustments as well. All we have to do now is make sure that our background and our adjustment layer is visible. And then go to File, Export, and then click Color Lookup Tables. Once you click on this, it will bring up this little dialog box. All we really want to make sure is that the quality is set to high and that the only format that we are exporting is a cube file. Once that is selected, click OK. It'll bring up a browser window to show you where you can save this to. So I'm going to call this red and blue. 
because it looks like a red and blue hue. Once you click OK, everything is done. Go back into Premiere, and now we can start to play with this. Change the workspace to Color. All you have to do is click on it. Under Color, on the right-hand side, you'll see a bunch of tabs. Click on the Creative tab. Now under the Creative tab, there's a thing called Look. Click on Look. It'll bring down this drop-down menu. Navigate and select Browse. Find where you saved your LUT to. Click on your LUT and click on Open. Once you open it, you'll see that your LUT has been applied. And we can full screen this and check out what it looks like on our video. If you enjoy what your LUT looks like, then all you have to do is go to the Effects Controls tab and right click on Lumetri Color, click on Save Preset, and name this whatever you want. Red and blue. And then click OK. Now that we clicked OK, we can go to our Effects tab and you'll see right under Presets, there's our LUT. A cool thing that you can do is create your own folder. So right click and click on New Preset Bin. This will pretty much create a brand new folder, New LUT. You can name it whatever you want. For the sake, I'm not actually going to do that because I'm currently working on a new cinematic LUT pack. So all I have to do is drag the red and blue LUT into my new cinematic LUT pack that will be available to you guys soon. Once you make a few, pretty soon you're gonna have a bunch and you'll get a varying degree of LUTs that you can play around with for your clips. It should also be noted that you can either apply your LUT to your clip or you can click on this new item button and create an adjustment layer. Once you have that adjustment layer, drag it on top of your clip so that anything that you apply will be applied to the adjustment layer and not the actual clip. Let me show you guys how to do one more LUT. So now I'm just gonna drag the gradient map down to the trash can and go to the adjustments and create a new gradient map. Now that we have our gradient map, I'm gonna click on the color and let's add four colors just to see what happens. We're gonna adjust the dark colors to, let's say white, see what happens. And let's go to the about 25% grade and change this to green. Now let's go to about 75% and change it to um, magenta or purple. And let's go to the upper colors and change it to a dark blue. And I actually want the darker colors to be a orange. And this looks really weird. We can adjust these parameters around a little bit to get more blue in the sky. Because I want blue and purple to mesh. And then click OK. Now we can have the fun part in playing with our blend modes. Okay, so screen looks kind of good. Bringing it up. And let's also reverse it just to see what it looks like. Cool thing about this is that we can continually adjust this as much as we want. And while we're editing, we can see live corrections being applied instantly. Once I like what I'm going at, all I have to do is go to File, Export, Color Lookup Table, make sure High is selected as well as Cube, and click OK. Save it as Green Fade, or whatever you want. Go back into Premiere, do the same thing under the Creative tab, click on Browse, select our newly exported LUT, click Open, and now we have it right there. Right click on Lumetri Color, click Save Preset, and name it whatever we want. And now all we have to do is go back to the Effects tab, click on Presets, and drag Green Fade into our newly created LUT folder. So hopefully you guys learned something about LUTs and a way to create an interesting dynamic LUT for your own videos. So if you guys learned something today, click that thumbs up and subscribe because I'm going to be making some more stuff in the future. I'll see you next time.